I'm always looking for ways to fuse my love of gaming and my love of making things. So this week, I'm turning Tetris into a lamp. This week's Tetris lamps are definitely an easier build than last week's coffee table. So I'll give you this, uh, yeah, you can do it if you try in terms of difficulty. For this project, you'll need a few different squares of colored glass to match the pieces from the game. I didn't have any trouble finding them at a local hardware store. For the design, you can either make your own Tetris layout or you can just print one off Google Images. To start, you'll need to cut strips of glass 3.5 centimeters or around 1 and a third inch wide. To do this, score the glass with your cutter by applying even pressure, dragging it along the glass and using a ruler to keep it straight. When you're ready, break the glass with a few light taps along the score. If that's not enough force, running pliers will come in handy. Now, repeat the process to turn the strips into squares. You'll need enough of each color to match your design. For the next step, you'll need a grinder, which are expensive. And if you don't have one, you can easily use a whetstone, which you can pick up at your local hardware store. Failing that, sandpaper will do the trick. But just make sure you wear a mask so you don't inhale all the deliciously deadly glass. Grinding the edges of the glass squares will help the copper foil stick to the glass better, and it will remove all the sharp edges. When that's out of the way, dry all the pieces of glass and make sure they're free from dust. Now you're going to want to take your copper foil tape and apply it to the edge of the glass squares, making sure the glass is in the middle of the tape. Pinch down the edges of the foil, fold down the corners, rub it along the edges with a hard object to make sure it's stuck to the glass. And bam! You have a bunch of glass pixels. Now you can go about laying them out in whatever pattern you want. Now this doesn't have to be Tetris. You can really turn this into any pixel art you want. I used a simple wood frame to make sure they were all in their correct places. Once everything is where you want it, use a paintbrush to apply flux to the copper foil. Again, this can easily be found at most hardware stores or in your parents' basement. To keep everything in place, spot solder all the pieces together at the joints and then continue to solder all areas of copper foil. This process was just like painting, but with hot metal. When you're done, it should look like a continuous bead of solder that runs around the entire design. And I learned the hard way that a soldering iron less powerful than 75 watts will have trouble. When you're done with the face, turn it on its side and do the edges. And when that's done, do the backside. Once the piece has been soldered, it's time to prepare the piece for patina, which is a fancy word I just learned, which essentially is a protective coating. Begin by cleaning the piece of flux with a baking soda solution. Then, use wire wool to lightly scratch the solder. Copper wool works best for this, but steel wool also will work. Use cotton swabs or q-tips to apply the patina to the solder. Once a q-tip has been used, it can't be used again. A black patina is most commonly used as it reduces the appearance of any errors in soldering, which, if you're like me, will be many. Once finished, the solder can be scratched and more patina can be applied to provide a darker finish. Now that we have the tetris -y part, let's make the lamp part. Cut the wood to size. I used a board 140mm by 19mm and cut the length to pairs of 308mm and 210mm. This means once the box is joined, you'll have a box of 238mm by 308mm by 140mm. I'll include metric and imperial measurements in the description, don't worry. Begin by making two rebates in each end of the longer pieces. Do this by placing the end of the shorter piece on the end of the longer piece and drawing a line. Chisel into this line to create a shoulder for your chisel. Set your marking gauge to 5 millimeters and use it to mark the depth of the rebate along the end of the plank. It's important that this line is visible. Chisel into the wood, gradually working your way down towards the 5 millimeter line until you have a smooth rebate taken out of the wood. Test the rebate to ensure that the piece fits correctly. Next, you have to take a rebate running with the grain out of the face of the box to fit the glass into. Run your marking gauge along the wood marking out the 5mm strip that must be removed. Create a shoulder for your chisel by slowly removing some of the wood along the marked line. Next, gradually use your chisel to form the rebate, ensuring that you're not following the grain into the wood. Repeat this for all four pieces. To join the pieces, glue along the rebate and clamp the pieces together. Allow to dry overnight. The L brackets can be added to the interior for extra support. Some decorative holes can be drilled into the sides of the frame to project light along the wall it's against. Now for the light. Drill a hole through the center of an old piece of wood. Attach the electronics to the block by the instructions. Or, if you're reusing the parts from an old lamp in the same way as the lamp you took them from, plug in the bulb to make sure it works. Attach the block to the base of the lamp using L brackets. If it's to be mounted on a wall, drill through the bottom. 
Finish the piece by applying whatever stain, varnish, or wax you want to use. You can paint the rebate a dark color to give it a more flush appearance to the face of the lamp. Use an adhesive to fix the glass panel to the frame. And there you have it, your favorite piece of pixel art turned into a cool stained glass looking lamp. What projects do you want us to do in future videos? Let us know in the comments. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Finish the table with two coats of stain and two coats of polyurethane with 220 grit and 400 grit paper to finish. There you have it, a coffee table made from scratch. Now sit back, open a beer, and don't ruin it by not using a coaster.